Praise the Lord. We are grateful. We are happy. We are excited for another Sunday morning to give God praise. All over the building, can we give God some joy? Can we give him some praise? On our online campus, we say good morning to you all. And we just want to welcome everyone. Welcome to the harvest. We're glad that you are here. Welcome to the harvest. Where the spirit of the Lord dwells. Welcome to the harvest. By the table is spread. Come on, my brothers and sisters. Give God your hand. Welcome to the harvest. Welcome to the harvest. We're glad. Welcome to the harvest. Welcome to the harvest. Where the spirit, where the spirit of the Lord dwells. Welcome to the harvest. Welcome to the harvest. Where the table, where the table is spread. Come on, come on, my brothers and sisters. Give God your hand. you tried it one day and you know that he can fix it do you believe that jesus can fix it can you tell your neighbor i know that jesus can fix it let's go Jesus, 
where you are. Come on, elevate your hands. Come on, elevate your hands, everybody. Come on. You know he's our way maker. You know he's a mind regulator. I see you, Sandra. You're smiling from cheek to cheek. I see it. 
Some things we go through, we act like God is, hasn't done it before. If he put done it, if he did it before, he can do it again. Minister Nelson said, why are you worrying? Why take no thought for tomorrow, the Bible declares. Reverend McKinnon, because it said tomorrow, Reverend Williams, it'll take care of itself. You in 2023, 2023 ain't even got here yet. All the way in 2023, God ain't even finished working miracles in 2022. You didn't hear me. I said he's not done working miracles in 2022. He got a few more days to do what he said. I don't know what I'll do, but I still believe God. I still believe him. I still believe him. Lift your hands. Come on, just take a few seconds right there. Come on. Thank you, Jesus. Can we share this simple worship song with you? Searched all over. Couldn't find nobody. Looked high and low. Still couldn't find nobody. Guess what, y'all? Nobody greater. Nobody greater. Nobody greater than you. Oh, I hear worshiping with us, Harvest. I hear you. Yes. Nobody greater. Nobody greater. Nobody greater than you. Come on, family. Searched all over. Couldn't find nobody. Search high. I look high and low. Still. Still couldn't find nobody. Come on, can we say it together? Nobody. Nobody, nobody great. Nobody great. Nobody great. Nobody greater than you. Oh, I hear y'all singing harder. No, 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 no. Nobody great. Nobody great. Nobody great. Yeah. Nobody greater than you. Family Harvest, I'm gonna take it right here. Listen, next part go this. Your name is above all names. Your name is above all names. You're worthy of all the praise. You're worthy of all the praise. Mighty are the works of your head. Mighty are the works yes, of Lord. your hands. Your name is above all names. Your name is above all names. You're worthy of all our praise. You're worthy of all our praise. Listen, mighty are the works of your hands. Mighty are the works of your hands. Mighty are the works of your hands. Your name is above all names. Your name is above all names. Your name is above all names.
Nobody greater. Nobody greater. Nobody greater. Nobody greater. Nobody greater than you. Searched all over, couldn't find nobody greater than my God. It is good to be in the house of prayer one more time. My brothers and sisters, this is the last first Sunday of the year. Amen. This is the last first Sunday of the year. God is great, and he's greatly to be praised. We certainly welcome all of our Amen. Sanctuary Saints, our online campus, our digital disciples. Amen. This is the day that the Lord has made. We ought to rejoice and be glad therein. Am I right about it? Amen. Listen, have your seats. Amen. I have a couple of announcements I want to share with our um, Harvest community. Um, we're certainly praying for Mother Hayes. Mother Hayes um, lost her daughter on the other day. Um, Sister Deborah Ferguson Christian, amen, amen, and we're praying for Mother Hayes. Mother Hayes have some remarkable faith, amen. I spoke with her the other day. She said, Pastor, I'm good. My daughter's in a better place. How many know to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord? We all not weep as if we have no hope, amen, amen. We sing about heaven. We preach about heaven. But some of us act like we don't want to go. Amen. So we're praying for Mother Hayes and her family. We're also praying for Deacon Willie Miller. He was hospitalized again. Also, Deacon Larry Miller. Don't get the Millers mixed up. We have a Deacon Willie Miller and a Deacon Larry Miller. Both have been hospitalized. And Deacon Howard, amen, Deacon Leon Howard is out of the hospital. You ought to get out of hand. He was in the hospital, but he's out. Um, we're going to pray for the Lumpkins. Um, um, Sister Lumpkin, Yolanda Lumpkin, mother, uh, Mother West is in the hospital. We pray her strength in the Lord. And Deacon Riley's brother is home now. Amen. <laughs> it's a lot to be thankful and grateful for. Amen. And we're also praying for the grants. The grants are no stranger to this ministry. Both of the grants are in the hospital. I believe um, Brother Grant is in hospice. Amen. And Sister Grant should be released in the near future. Amen. She's supposed to be released on yesterday, but she should be released today or tomorrow. So pray for all the sick and sent in. Continue to pray um, for Deacon Adams and all those that, I, if I didn't call your name, please charge it to my head, not my heart. Amen. I believe um, um, Deacon Ness um, um, Brown. Amen. Brown. We're praying for Mother Brown as well. Amen. Amen. This is the day that the Lord has made. We ought to rejoice and be glad therein. Listen, y'all know Pastor likes to be the dead horse. Amen. So we're going to first um, Thessalonic, Thessalonia and the fifth chapter. Amen. Is that all right? First Thessalonians. The fifth chapter and the eighteenth verse. The baby said, Yeah. It says, In everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. You may be seated. Amen. In everything give thanks, for this is the will of God. Somebody say the will of God. In Christ Jesus concerning you. I solicit your prayers. I want to salute our deacons, ministers, officers, and friends. Um, this being the last first Sunday of the year, I'm going to commune everyone myself. Amen. I'm on, and on the first communion, first Sunday in January, I will do the same thing. And then we'll go back, amen, to um, standard protocol. Amen. I want to talk and share with you, my brothers and sisters, we had Old Give Thanks Part 1 and Part 2, amen. We, we learned um, last Sunday we were together, amen, that our gratitude ought to be purposed, amen. It ought, it ought to be determined. Our gratitude ought to be particular. It ought to be detailed. Our gratitude ought to be 
um, professed, amen, it ought to be declared. And today we're going to deal with a thankful mind. Someone say a thankful mind. Brothers and sisters, as we look at this fifth chapter of First Thessalonians, I need to tell you that nestled in these final instructions and benediction of the writer is that 18th verse that can help us today. It is gratitude that keeps this overwhelming darkness from overtaking our lives. If you ever want to repel the darkness, the discouragement, the depression, amen, learn how to be thankful. I'm going to challenge you all. We do many challenges in the beginning of the year, but we seldom challenge folks at the end of the year. I'm going to challenge all of you to get a gratitude journal. Amen. A gratitude journal. And all pastor wants you to write in that gratitude journal are the things you're grateful for and the things that God has done for you. That's the only thing. Get a gratitude journal. And then when you get down in the press, go back to your journal and remind yourself how blessed you really are. Can I get a witness in the building? Don't have to wait to 2023. Do that this week, today. Amen. Get yourself a gratitude journal and begin to document Amen. All the good things, all the things that you're grateful and thankful for. Amen. Leave the bad stuff out. Amen. For the first time in your life, leave all the bad stuff out. Amen. Amen. Put all the good stuff in it. Every now and then, go back and peruse. Amen. How good and how grateful you are that God is great and greatly to be praised. Brothers and sisters, as we look at this text, I said it's nestled here, giving thanks in everything, for this is God's will for you in Christ. Gratitude is the attitude that keeps my life flying at a steady altitude regardless of the storm I'm in. Gratitude, y'all ain't helping me, is the attitude that keeps you and me and our lives flying at an altitude no matter what storms we are experiencing. When you have gratitude, watch this now, don't shout too early, you can fly above your storm. Anybody ever took a flight every now and then? I get on some airplanes, and when I get to that certain um, um, altitude, you look down and you see the clouds are under you. Y'all missed it. Amen. Normally, the clouds are above us, but when you get in the plane and fly above, y'all ain't helping me, at a certain altitude, amen, you could look down and see the clouds. I'm trying to help somebody. When you have gratitude, instead of looking up at the storm, you can look down on the storm, knowing that the storms of life can really be under your feet if you have the right attitude, amen, and confess the right gratitude. Can I get a witness in the building? I must tell you, my brothers and sisters, because I'm not rushing today, the Dolphins play at four, amen, amen. That was for Cliff, amen, amen. I must tell you, my brothers and sisters, being thankful is very unnatural. I know you was born holy and you did everything right, but being Grateful and thankful is really unnatural. It goes against our nature. It is our nature to be ungrateful. It is our culture to be ungrateful. The power of thanking is that it keeps my heart giving. The more I thank God, the more my heart keeps pumping. Y'all mighty quiet. When you stop giving your spiritual heart, amen, when you stop giving and stop being um, grateful and, and, and express gratitude, your spiritual heart stops pumping. Your spiritual heart, not your physical heart, your spiritual heart stops pumping and your spiritual um, um, lungs stop breathing. Because the moment you stop giving God thanks is the very moment you begin to die. Can I take my time? The moment you stop being grateful and thankful is the moment, amen, you become depressed and discouraged and you become the victim. The moment you stop thanking God in everything, 
is the moment your spiritual heart and your spiritual lungs stop beating and stop breathing. Gratitude helps me learn to dance in the rain instead of run from the storm. In tough times, we naturally shut down. Y'all know, y'all know I'm talking the truth. When we go through some stuff, we shut down. Amen. We shut folk out. We don't want to hear nobody. Don't want to see nobody. Don't want to come to church. Amen. And then when you come to church, you sit there like a bump on a log, like somebody bothering you. Amen. I wish I had a witness here. You, I just want to go and get a word. Well, how you going to get a word and worry at the same time? Amen. If you're getting a word, put down worry. Amen. Pick up the word. If you come to get a word, get that. Amen. Because some of you are sleepy already. I wish I had a witness here. Ought to be grateful and thankful. Amen. In everything. Stop closing people out. In tough times, we naturally shut down. When you're in a storm, we retreat inside, close the door, and shut the windows. You don't, you don't want nobody to call you or bother you, text you, or tweet you, or inbox you, or DM you. I'm trying to find however you communicate. Amen. You do everything you can to close yourself off from the outside world. But gratitude helps me learn to dance in the rain rather than run inside from the storm. I wish I had some folk that had some little children. And when it rains, they got puddles out there. Them kids go straight to the puddle and splash all in the puddle. I wish I had a witness here. Adults, we run from the rain. We run from the puddles of life. But kids play in the puddle. And when you are gra when you have gratitude, to, you'll learn how to splash the puddles in your life. They used to have a place called Splashdown. Maybe I'm dating myself. Amen. Y'all remember Splashdown? Amen. Sometimes when you're feeling down, you got to splash down and tell God, thank you for every puddle in my life. Thank you for all the rain in my life. Thank you for the valleys in my life because this too shall pass. The praise team just sung, I'm so glad. Trouble don't last. Touch somebody and say, trouble don't last always. I've been in trouble a lot. Amen. It don't last always. A storm come and it passes. Instead of closing myself off, I can learn to open myself up to new possibilities. Did y'all hear me? Instead of shutting down, I'm going to open up to new possibilities. Okay. Psalms 119 and 71 said that it is good for me that I have been afflicted, that I might learn thy statutes. I'm going to open myself up to new possibilities. When trouble comes in my life, I'm going to learn what God is trying to teach me. You can't make an omelet without breaking eggs. Look at your neighbor and say, if you want an omelet, you got to break some eggs. And if you want God to put, put you together, if you want God, amen, to create something special in your life, there's some things that got to be broken around you. And maybe the storms and what you're going through is breaking you to become an omelet. Y'all ain't helping me. He said, it was good that I was afflicted. The psalm writer said, it was good for me that I may learn more of you. One thing, amen, it's not the trend anymore. One thing that used to happen back in the day, when we went through some trouble, we ran to God. We ain't running to God no more. We running to palm readers. Oh, y'all mighty quiet. I say back in the day when trouble came in our lives, we ran to God. We ran to the church. We ran to some spiritual enlightenment. Now we run the great goose. We don't run to the rock. We run to Sir Rock. We run to Johnny that like to walk. Y'all ain't helping me. Y'all 
Y'all mighty quiet because our joy come in bottles and baggies and we don't know we can find some joy in this Bible. I wish I had a witness here. Amen. A bottle and a baggie can only take you so far. And when you come back down, you have the same trouble. But when you thank God of all the goodness and great, y'all ain't helping me. You can have, you can be in the midst of a storm and still have peace. Y'all don't like your preacher today. There are three different types of situations we face that we ought to keep a thankful mind in. Toxic situations. That's conflicts. Tragic situations. That's death and suffering and loss of a loved one. But we also have chronic situations. Situations that keep going on and on and feel like, am I ever going to get a break? We got toxic situations, tragic situations, and chronic situations. Some of you have asked God, what's going to happen next? Because of the chronic situation. If it ain't one thing, it's another. I, I feel like preaching. As soon as you get the water bill paid, here comes the light bill. Get the light bill paid. Here comes the cable bill. Get the cable bill paid. Here comes insurance. Get the insurance paid. Here come the rent man. Y'all ain't hipping me. Get the rent man paid. Here come the mortgage. If it ain't one thing, uh, it's another. Hey, Amen. If you got Metro PCS, they don't wait for you to pay them. They're going to cut you right off. These other things, these other things you can play with, you know, you can carry over and, uh, and play with. But if, if your due date's the day, baby, and you ain't pay Metro PCS, that's pole colored service PCS. Amen. They going to cut you off. Same day. Look at your name and say, if it ain't one thing, it's another. Get your spouse to understand. The kids don't understand. Get the kids to understand. The dog and the poodle and the pack, y'all, ain't helping me. Don't understand. If it ain't one thing, it's another. Get church folk to act right. The people on their job lose their mind. If it ain't one thing, it's another. Can I get a witness in the building? And so we got chronic situations, tragic situations, toxic situations. But in every situation, you ought to give God some thanks. Here's three things. I only have three things for you. There's three things I can be thankful for in any situation. First of all, the first thing I'm going to be thankful for, I can rejoice. Somebody say rejoice. Because I'm in Christ. I know this first Sunday, we're going back to the table, and that's what I like about first Sunday. It gives an opportunity to not to examine our neighbor, amen, not to examine people across the street, not to examine the person we're sitting by, but to examine ourselves. Thank God for the table. You ought to say, thank God for the table. Because you can't take that unworthily. You got to be real with yourself and honest with yourself and examine yourself. And before you take that, before you take his body and his blood, you got to make sure you're right. Am I right about it? And so here, here, I, I, I can rejoice because I'm in Christ. Somebody shout in Christ. Thank God for the salvation I'm in, not the situation I'm in. I'm going to slow down. I'm going to thank God for the salvation I'm in, because if I thank God for the salvation I'm in, I can survive the situation I'm in. Oh, that's pretty preaching right there. The problem is we focus more on the situation we in and we forget that we supposed to be in salvation in Christ. I got two claps. What that does, it means to be in Christ. Paul uses the phrases throughout his writings in the New Testament. My salvation is permanent. I'm going to shout you. My salvation is permanent, but my situation is temporary. Am I the only one that may feel good? My salvation is permanent, but my situation is temporary. I'm going to be saved forever, but I'm not going to go through this forever. Boy, that's a good way to look at life. Look at your neighbor and say, my salvation is permanent, but my situation is temporary. Even
even when you are in trouble, you're still in Christ. <laughs> even when you're in over your head, you're still in Christ. Even when you're in pain, you're still in Christ. Even when they backstab you, you're still in Christ. Even when you're in despair, you're still in Christ. Even when you're discouraged, you're still in Christ. Even when you're depressed, you are still in Christ. And as long as you are in Christ, you can handle any situation you in. Touch your neighbor, I'm in Christ. That make me a bad mamma jamma. That brings Romans 8, 28. Amen. All things work together for good. Come on, help me. For those that what? Love the Lord. And to the call according to his purpose. If I'm in Christ, everything going to be all right. I didn't say everything going to turn out all right. I say everything going to be. See, see, y'all, see, when you're in Christ, you don't have to have a good outcome because God can take a bad outcome and work it out for your good. Don't you get it twisted. We serve a God that can take a bad outcome and flip the script and it'll be good for you even though it was bad to you. Y'all missed that. You mean to tell me I serve a God that can take something that happened bad to me and flip it and make it good for me? Yes, you do. And that's why you ought to thank him every chance you get. You ought to, you ought to tell your neighbor, neighbor, you sat by the wrong person this morning because I, I just look back over my life. It's about to get no noisy on this road. Give me some elbow room. You can't make me doubt him. I know too much about him. I lost some things, but I never lost him. People walked out of my life, but he never walked out of mine. Oh, look at somebody say, I'm in him, I'm in him. Yeah, I'm in this situation, but I'm in him. And man, when, as long as I stay in him, Sabrina, he's he going to deal with this situation. I'm not going to let this situation overwhelm me. I'm going to let God surround me. I may be surrounded, but I'm surrounded by God. That's why I could be crowded and not crushed. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I can rejoice that I'm in Christ. Yeah, I can rejoice that I'm in my salvation and technically not in my situation. We got to get to the point, like Joseph, when you're in the pit, but you know you're on your way to a palace. Who am I preaching to? You got to, you got to look at the mud on your shoes and say this mud is about to turn into marble. Cause the God I serve, he's able to flip the script. What you meant for evil, God has a way of turning things. Y'all don't, y'all gonna make me preach today. What you meant for evil, God has a way of turning things out for my good. That knife in my back saved my life. You thought you was killing me and damaging me, but you really saved my life because now I know Negroes will stab you in the back. Y'all gonna make me preach to 3.30. I have a thankful mind. I have a thankful mind because... I can rejoice that I am in Christ. Somebody say in Christ. I love this next one. I'm awful. I have a thankful mind because I can rejoice. Watch this. That I am in God's will. Some of you want to be in Christ but don't want to be in his will. But it's hard to be in Christ and not be in his will. Preach Holy Ghost. 
I can rejoice. I can rejoice that I'm in God's will for this is God's will for you. The situation not be God's will, but my reaction can be God's will. Uh -oh. I just got it. I had y'all up until this point. I had y'all. He says, in everything give thanks, for this is the will of God. In everything. That's not the will of Gregory Thompson. The word say, in everything give thanks, this is the will of God. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. This may hurt y'all feelings. Painful situations are inevitable. But a negative reaction is optional. You don't choose the pain and problems you're going through, but you do choose how you respond to it. Help me, Holy Ghost. Set your people free. You don't choose the situation, but you do have a choice. And how you respond to what's going on in your life. That's your responsibility. Stop telling folk you made me cuss you out. No, you wanted to cuss me out. You've been wanting to cuss me out for a long time. <laughs> you just chose to do it now. Y'all know we got some cussing Christians. I don't know if that's an oxymoron. <laughs> Your situation may be negative. I don't take that from you. But it does not warrant a negative response. All right, in this same... In this same, if, I'm, if, if my theology, theology is correct, in this same verse 5 and 15 say, See that none render evil for evil unto any man, but ever follow that which is good both among yourselves and to all men. I'm not making this up. It's in the same chapter. I read it every now and then, y'all. Amen. It's in the chapter. It's like ragu is in there. Look at your name and say, it's like Ragu is in there. What, what he's saying, you got to do what's good because it's good to do what's good even though good ain't been done to you. Don't render evil for evil, railing for railing. Don't cuss them out because they cussing you out. Here's a real nice way to get somebody together. May God bless you. Y'all to get that on the way home. Some of y'all done said to people that made y'all mad, God bless you. You don't know what they're really saying. May God bless you and keep you is my prayer. Bless your heart. Bless your heart, baby. You don't have to render evil for evil. Railing for railing. You don't have to go down to people level. Can I get a witness here? You know how we got... Amen. A chronic issue with violence in our community because nobody wants to stop. You get me, I got to get you. And it's a vicious cycle because people don't understand. Amen. People don't understand. Can't nobody fight a battle like God. This is another one I want to teach y'all. When they say this, you in trouble. I'm going to put you in the hands of the Lord. Ooh, you in big trouble now. Because can't nobody do it better than God. Can I get a witness? So the situation may not be God's will, but my reaction is God's will. And sometimes we're not in God's will based on our reaction. Are you toting the Bible, going to church every Sunday. And then when something bad happened to you, you become the villain. I tell all my people, if you the victim, stay the victim. Don't ever become the villain. 
Because some vic we have real victims, but they become the villain. You know why? Based on how they respond. And then the person you responded to, they say, I'm glad I did that Negro like that. I'm serious. Okay, 1 Corinthians say, amen. If your enemy desire a glass of water, give him a tall glass. I'm paraphrasing. In doing so, you're heaping hot coals upon their head. Can I explain that to y'all? In other words, the word of God is saying, when you do good to people that do you bad, you're burning their conscience. Because unless they are a demon, you can only treat somebody bad so long that treating you good. If you continue to be good to them, they ain't going to be able to sleep at night. They ain't going to be able to get you off. They, I wish I had a witness. They're they, they going to feel bad about the, how they treat you and how they respond to you. It's like putting hot coals on their head. I got a lot of y'all with hot coals on y'all heads. Y'all to get that on the way home. I ain't going to render evil for evil. I know you don't like me, but I'm still going to love you. I know I'm not your pastor, I'm just your preacher, but I'm still going to pastor you. Still going to be there for you. Still going to show up. Because I'm not going to treat you the way you treat me. I'm always treat you better than you treat me. Y'all ain't helping me. The Bible says treat people the way you want to be treated, not the way they treated you. Look at your neighbor and say, that's the golden rule. I'm going to rejoice because I'm in Christ. But I'm going to rejoice because I'm his will. Listen to me carefully. I know I say a lot of things that's comical. But listen to me. This is very serious. If there's any place you want to be, is in the will of God. So, if the scripture says, in everything give thanks, for this is the will of God. I know some of y'all say, I ain't getting no journal. That's the will of God. Because he wants you to be thankful. Some of y'all ain't going to get it. I know y'all are headed. I've been passing y'all for 22 years. A journal. I ain't getting no journal. That's the will of God. Go get that journal. That thankful, grateful journal. And begin every day to write how good God has been to you. And then when that dark cloud rolls in, open your Bible and your personal Bible. That's your journal. Yeah, you know Job. You know Matthew, Mark, Luke, John. But I got a book in the Bible now. My journal. Let's see what God done for Greg. Because if he did it yesterday, he can do it today, and if he did it today, he can do it on tomorrow. I have a thankful mind because I rejoice that I am in Christ. I rejoice that I am in God's will. This, this blew my mind, but I rejoice that I am in God's thoughts and prayers. I am never off God's mind. I know Reverend Donaldson thinks she's God's favorite. But I'm God's favorite too. He is continually thinking about me and Reverend Donaldson. Can I add myself to it? Somebody say, me too. What Jeremiah 29, 11 said. I have good thoughts towards you. Look at your name and say, God got me on his mind. <laughs> to give you, watch this, an expected end, a hopeful end, a prosperous end. I don't care what you're going through now. If you on God's mind late in the midnight hour, God's going to flip that thing around. And look at your name and say, I'm on God's mind. I'm on God's mind. He's thinking about me right now. There's never a moment when God is not thinking about me. If that's true, my brothers and sisters, then he is thinking about me all the time, in everything. If God is thinking about me in everything, then I don't have to worry about anything. 
Okay, let me say that slow. Let me say that slow. If God is thinking about me in everything, then I don't have to worry about anything. Maybe third time is a charm. If God is thinking about me in everything, then I don't have to worry about anything. That's a little better. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, I got a feeling. Everything going to be all right. Oh, y'all don't feel like that. Y'all don't feel like that. Y'all don't really feel like that. Find another neighbor and say, neighbor, I got a feeling that everything going to be all right. That's what I heard in the voice of Mother Hayes when I was speaking to her. She knew that everything is going to be all right. Do I have any takers in the, in the house? In other words, y'all don't like this. I'm in the witness protection program. And I'm not, I'm not in the witness protection program because I snitched. I'm in the witness protection program because I gave him thanks. He has a way of relocating us. Y'all ain't helping me. He has a way of not only relocating us, but renewing us. Amen. He has a way of rejuvenile. Y'all ain't helping me. Amen. Amen. He has a way when he relocate us from our stinking thinking. Amen. He puts us in the frame of mind. Amen. That we move from being a thermometer to a thermostat. There's a difference between a thermometer and a thermostat. One can only tell you what the temperature is. The other one can change the atmosphere. Look at your neighbor and say, are you a thermostat or a thermometer? Are you just going to complain about what the temperature is? Or do you have the power to shift the atmosphere? Don't tell me the temperature. Put it where you want it at. Amen. Amen. If you want to be happy in your life, give God some thanks. If you want, y'all ain't happy. Let me come over here. Amen. You can shift the atmosphere with the right mindset. Yeah, I'm, 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 I have a thankful mind because I'm in God's. I'm in God. I'm in Christ. I'm in his will, but I'm on his mind. Somebody help me preach this. God is thinking, if God is thinking about me, Reverend Joseph, that means he will take care of me. Amen. Amen. If you on something, that's why I don't, I don't get mad when I'm on my haters' mind. Y'all like, why they always think, oh, you, you, they got to think about something. <laughs> and why not think about me? <laughs> I love to burn you. I, I love, I, this, a, this, a, this a thank you to all my haters. Thank you for letting me live in your mind rent free. That's one place I don't have to pay rent is in your mind. Because if I'm always on your mind, I'll always be in your mouth. So thank you for the free publicity. Free PR. If God got me on his mind, that means he's going to take care of me. He said in Jeremiah, I'm going to give you an expected end. I don't want to preach two sermons, but they were in exile. And they wasn't going to be there for two days. They was going to be there for many, 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 many years. He told them, you might as well dig some wells, plant some vineyards, build some houses. I wish I had some mind reading. You know what he was saying? You know what he was saying? Brother Whip, he was saying, you got to make the best of a bad situation.
Look at your neighbor and say, because I'm in Christ, because I'm in his will, and because I'm on his mind, I've learned to make the best of a bad situation. If my light's off, I'm going to have a candle like dinner. Y'all ain't helping me. If my water off, I'm going to go to the beach. I wish I had a witness here. You got to learn how to make the best out of a bad situation. If my car break down, come here, Uber. Come here, Lyft. God is thinking about me. He's going to take care of me. He's going to provide for me. I got to go, y'all. Amen. Watch this. Not only will he provide for me, I, I come to let you know he will strengthen me. Somebody say he's going to strengthen me. The Lord will strengthen me. When I'm weak, he's strong. Can I get a witness in the building? God is able not only to provide for me, but he's able to strengthen me. He's able to prove me. He's able to show me where I'm weak and where he's strong. I told you last week, many of us got to over-evaluate opinion of ourselves. We so conceited. Many of us don't even believe we need God. Oh, what a bad place to be. When you think you don't need God, that means you're not in the will of God, not in his son Christ. And you believe you're not even on his mind. Some of y'all want to throw the whole day away. Don't throw no day away. There's something in that day that God is trying to use to strengthen you. Don't throw nothing away. I told you what the Psalms say, it was good that I've been afflicted. Uh, sometimes the affliction, y'all ain't going to like, I got to say it anyway. Sometimes being afflicted is better than being blessed. Uh-oh. Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. Because it's in the affliction that I learned. I learned nothing at a party. But I learned a lot in pain. And some of y'all trying to get the very thing God uses to teach us out of your life. No. You can't make a cake without putting it in the oven. You can't purify gold without fire. And the very thing God is using to burn some stuff off of us is the very thing we're trying to repel. Because you don't think you deserve it. It's not that you deserve it, but you need it. Woo! I knew it wouldn't get loud. The very thing you don't want is the very thing you need. Mother Amanda Whipple, every morning got up. Sister One Need and gave me a tablespoon, not a tea spoon. A tablespoon of castor oil. Yuck. Nasty. But you know, every morning grandma gave me that castor oil before I went to Ponciana Elementary, the Margin Cavaliers. I had no colds. I had no fevers. What was bad to me was good for me. And we repel the things that God is using because it don't taste good. It don't feel good. It's just no good. But it's those things that God uses to teach us, to mature us, Elevate us. Because he know every new level is a new devil. You probably got this devil on the last, the last stage. You probably did good, but this devil, whew, this devil on the next step, 
is different than the devil on the last step. Can I get a witness in the building? So I'm thankful. I'm thankful. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm, 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 I'm going to say this. I'm going I'm to I'm leave you alone. I'm thankful even for the devils in my life. Thankful for the demons that are assigned to me. Because every demon that's assigned to me, it makes my anointing even greater. Oh, y'all don't like this kind of preaching. I don't want no demon around me. I know. Come on, baby. Hit me with your best shot because the God I serve, he's able to knock you down. That's what I mean when I say I ain't scared of none of y'all. I know I have the victory. If God is thinking about me so much, I don't need to think about myself as much. Uh Uh-oh. I knew this wouldn't work. I know this wouldn't work for me today. If God is thinking about me so much, then I don't need to think about myself so much. I'm going to say it one more time. Because y'all, some like, mm-hmm. Some of us, all we do is just think about ourselves. Everything about us. Every. Rolling eyes about you. Every sermon is about you. Every, every text is about you. Something wrong with you if you think everything about you. If you only knew, you ain't even on my mind. You on God's mind, not mine. I don't have subliminal messages towards you. Maybe you guilty in Cinderella. If the shoe fit, put it on, baby. Maybe that's your own guilt. If the shoe don't fit, you must have quit. Everything. I, I, I read a book called The Four Agreements. I hope I got it right. And the, one, of the fir- one of the one agreements is stop taking everything so personal. Everything ain't about you. And be impeccable with your words. Read it. Read it. Everything ain't about you. And watch this. You ain't the only one doing what you do. It could be somebody behind you, in front of you, on the side of you, doing the same thing you do. But God knows through his word, he can give you a word that make you what? Challenge you. Not challenge the preacher. Because some of the stuff I preach about is for me too. I'll be like, God, you really want me to say that part? That's me. I get cut first. It's a two-edged sword. And watch this. Most of the time, I got to go, y'all, 99.9% of the time, it is about me. He get me right first before y'all ain't helping me. Can I get a witness in the building? So if God is thinking about me, I don't need to think about myself as much. I got to go. I can leave that all up to God and trust him instead of worrying about myself in this situation. This is a, this is a trust issue and a faith issue. When we have a trust issue, we have a faith issue. If you don't trust that God is going to lead you the right way, you ain't going to have faith to walk by faith and not by sight. It's a trust and a faith issue. Come up here, son. It's a trust and a faith issue. It's a trust and a faith. You can't have faith in nothing you don't trust. If you don't trust him or her, you're not going to have faith in him and her. You're going to be looking through phones and going through the laundry. Oh, y'all know I know y'all. You're going to be doing drive-bys and other folk cars. Because you have a trust issue, you don't have a faith issue. 
And when you don't trust God and you can't have faith in God to tell him thank you and everything because you believe God is against you. God ain't against us. We have been against him. And we have been against ourselves. Don't ever get in the position where you think God is against you. You ain't even that qualified to be on that level with God. I only know one person God's against, and that's the devil. Unless that's what you're calling yourself. But if you on his side, in him, in his will, on his mind, how can he be against you? The Bible don't say if God be against you, who can be for you? The Bible say if God be for you, who can be against you? Look at your neighbor and say, he ain't against me. He been blessing me. Hey, y'all, come on. I, I, I want some folk that can say it to somebody. Look at somebody and say, he ain't never been against me. Matter of fact, he been for me. He been better to me than I've been to my own self. God is good all the time. And all the time, God is good. I'm hooping now, y'all. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, you looking how God been good. Because you looking at me. I'm his masterpiece. I'm his miracle. He took nothing and made something. He threw his best work in darkness. He picked me up and turned me around. He put my feet on solid ground. You can't make me doubt him. I know too much about him. You're looking at a miracle. That's why I have a thankful mind. One, because I rejoice that I'm, I am in Christ. I rejoice that I am in God's will. And I rejoice that I'm on God's mind. In everything, give thanks. For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Come on, give God a hand clap of praise. Listen, my brothers and sisters, in my introduction, I failed to mention that Deacon um, Elliot lost his nephew, and he, he'll be traveling um, to Texas um, very soon. So we're praying for the Elliots as well. Deacon Elliot, our very own Deacon, lost his nephew. Amen. He's going to go and be with the family and celebrate a life worth celebrating. Amen. At this time to all our viewers and streamers, amen, I'm going to lead you in communion. I'm going to lead everybody today, amen, in communion myself. This is the last first Sunday, amen, and I want everyone to receive communion from their pastor, amen. But if you're on the stream, I pray by now, before we do this communion, um, I want to give the streaming community and the sanctuary community all the opportunity to come to Christ. Amen. This thankful mind, you can't have it without being in Christ. In God's will and on God's mind. Come. Come. Come to Jesus. We on good time, y'all. Come to Jesus. I know he will. He will save you. He, he will save you just now. Just now. He will save you. He will save you just now. Only trust him. 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 
Listen, if you're on the stream or in the sanctuary, pray this prayer with me. Father, forgive me of all of my sins. Come into my life. Come into my heart. Create in me a clean mind. Renew in me the right spirit. Father, I believe you sent Jesus to die for me. But I believe he got up with all power in his hand. I'm confessing with my mouth and believe in my heart that he's your son and you raised him from the dead. And I'm willing to be baptized in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. If you prayed that prayer with me, whether in the sanctuary or on the stream, you are now in the ark of safety. You're now in Christ. Now get in his will and stay on his mind. Amen. And remember to always be thankful, always be grateful in everything, no matter what you're going through. The ups, the downs, the sunshine, the rain. Be grateful, be thankful, and God will make a way out of no way. God bless you. Amen. For our streaming community, I pray that you are ready now to receive the Lord's Supper. It was on a Thursday night, my brothers and sisters, that Jesus sat with his 12 disciples. He took bread, he broke it and blessed it. He blessed it and broke it and told them, take ye, eat all of it. After they supped, the scripture declares that he took the cup and gave thanks and told them to drink ye all of it. He shared with them that the wine was symbolic of his blood and the bread was symbolic of his body. He took them through a lesson in servitude and humility. He washed all their feet and he didn't wash Judas' feet any differently than he washed the others. There was a disciple named John that he loved. John, the beloved disciple. And Judas, the one that betrayed Jesus, he washed their feet the same. Much like we learn today, don't render evil for evil or railing for railing. Do good to all because God will is that we respond the way he wants us to respond not the way the enemy will have us to respond. May God bless you. May God keep you. This is my prayer. This concludes our stream. Amen. We pray that you would meet us. Same back channel, same back station, same back time. 9.30 on second Sunday in December. May God bless you. May God keep you. <laughs>